hear me out on this. We have been advised that the Committee on Open Government has stated that a public body, such as our town board, can adopt reasonable rules to ensure fairness, allowing those who want to speak a specific period of time to express their views. We have already received extensive information and materials by interested parties at prior meetings on the subject of involvement of the town and this town board, in particular as to future natural gas development, if and when the moratorium imposed by the state of New York is lifted. I see that there are a number of people present who have discussed their views on the subject at our July meeting. Therefore, in order to treat all persons who wish to participate in further discussion on this subject in a fair manner, I move that any persons who have not previously spoken at our July meeting in opposition to natural gas development be given three minutes each, but not more than a total of 30 minutes to present their thoughts. And if there is time remaining in those 30 minutes, that persons who did speak at our July meeting can also repeat their views for three minutes each. The three-minute rule was suggested by the New York State Committee of Open Government in a 2009 opinion. I further move that any persons who have not previously spoken at our July meeting in favor of natural gas development be given three minutes each, but not more than a total of 30 minutes to present their thoughts. And if there is time remaining in those 30 minutes, the persons who did speak at our July meeting can also repeat their views for three minutes each. Of course, the town board, upon approval of a motion to do so, may for good cause express, expressed in motion, reduce or extend the time during which an individual may speak. Of course, in addition to expressions of opinion made at this meeting, we will be happy to receive written comments in favor of or against natural gas development, which may be addressed to this board in care of the town clerk. Do I have a second on this motion? I'll second that. Can I need a roll call vote? Aye. Gordon Tyler? Aye. Dewey Becker? Aye. Kevin McKee? Aye. David Martin? Aye. <laughs> okay, so the, <coughs> the public participation is open. And, uh, we will start with the, uh, uh, those that are opposed. <coughs> we have three minutes. Anybody would like to speak? It's three to thirty, right? <laughs> Three minutes to thirty. Not to exceed thirty. I don't think I've got to take thirty, but I haven't spoken before. Um, there you can say. I'm Maggie Davidson from Tony Walker Road in Stanford. Town of Stanford. We have a petition to bring that to you. It is from the Stanford Quagga Area Concerned Citizens, or SOACC, requesting a moratorium on Marcella Shell gas extraction. Copies of this petition have been forwarded to Governor Cuomo, Attorney General Schneiderman, and Comptroller Dina Coley. I am here with my children, my daughter Molly. She is a sixth generation LA and deposit girl and your homecoming queen of 2009. Take away your <laughs> <laughs> My young Will, class of 2010, he comes home each summer from college to work on a local farm and he and his buddies have won the deposit lumberjack, lumberjack rat race for the past four or five years. He's lost count. <laughs> they are the face of the generation that hydraulic fracturing will be robbing. You and I, we've had our time here. We've raised our children. They've waded in the creeks, hiked the mountains, fled down the hills, fished the river, camped in the woods. But we would be denying this next generation of watching their own children do the same. <coughs> I have seen the fracking in Pennsylvania. Trust me, if this happens, our young people will not want to settle here. Not with the 24-7 lights and noise, the pollution issues with water and air, the butchered landscape, the non-stop truck traffic, the prostitutes, drug dealers, and transients. It becomes a creepy place. We live here because it is rural, peaceful, safe, and friendly. We are millionaires when it comes to good air and good spring water and good neighbors. Very few people in the world can say this, and even fewer now, right over the border in Pennsylvania. Governor Cuomo has said he would offer up this township as a sacrifice zone and a demonstration project because of the resolution that this board passed, one that gambles our health, our water, and our air. Let's see if our kids get sick first before we risk anybody else in the state. I'm sorry I haven't stood here before now, 
I trusted, I simply trusted that you were working in my best interest and in the interest of my family here. But I am before you now and speaking on behalf of the hundreds of people who signed this petition. We've gathered these signatures from people on our back roads and in the village, from people who know they have everything to lose, from people who call places like Hale Letty and River Road home, from people who have thanked God then hugged us and grabbed the petition out of our hands to sign. From people who, like all of us here, love our land, our homeland, everybody's land, the concept that's been missing from this process. And we have signatures from leaseholders as well. They are realizing now what is at stake. No one wants to live or raise their children in an industrial zone. No one. But this is what you sign us all up for without our consent or opinion. Why are we welcoming this ugly, dirty industry when so many other towns are working so hard to ban it? We want to know that we will be safe, our water and our air will be safe, and that our way of life can endure beyond this generation. Let's let future children have the childhood that we have, that these two have. $25, $2,500, $2.5 million, there's no price tag on the value of growing up healthy in the country. And in a place that's been considered home for so many of us by our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, and for these two, great-great-great-grandparents. And let's not forget this. They are in the very ground that we are shattering. And this lineage ends now with us and from something we could have prevented. Lastly, as I present this petition and these signatures, over 400 of them, and this is from just a few evenings ago going door to door, 228 from the town of Stanford, um, others from the town deposit, and there will be more. Um, this is just the beginning. We're in this together. But lastly, I beg you to take a trip to PA if you haven't already, to see for yourself. And take a citizen's tour, not a company tour. Talk to the people who've been affected. So many people beg us to work on their behalf here in New York, so that they will have to, a place to settle close by. If what is happening in Pennsylvania is what's going to happen in the town of Stanford, then many of us, too, will need a place to go, forced out, just like the people of Cannonsville, but this time not because of an outside authority, but because of our very own town's policies and decisions. This board has done right by its citizens who have gained money from this. They have already benefited and no harm done. We respectfully ask that it do right by all of its citizens now, especially our children and our elderly, and grant at minimum a one-year moratorium for a health impact assessment. Nobody loses. Thank you. I would like to have you present the petition. Okay. I'd like to submit some documents to you. <coughs> I have um, a couple primary concerns. Oh, would you speak your name? Oh, Leland, I'm sorry, Leland Snyder. I'm at uh, 110 Bryce Road in the town of Sanford. I also live in uh, Piscataway, New Jersey. Um, there's a going to be a compressor station right next to our, uh, our farm. Right at what would be the bend in the Millennium Pipeline, about seven miles due west, of course, of Cannonsville Reservoir and the deposit reservoir. Now, if you look at the first page, you'll see the permitted amounts of formaldehyde allowed for various compressor stations in Texas. Now, I wondered this myself. Where does formaldehyde come from if it's not coming from the gas? Well, just like the combustion engine causes uh, carbon monoxide and incomplete combustion, formaldehyde is a byproduct of the incomplete combustion of methane. It's CH4. When you get one oxygen there and two hydrogens and a single carbon, you have formaldehyde. So you're going to have potentially, well, I guarantee you're going to have at least one ton. Most likely, if it's an average <coughs> station, it's got to be about 15 tons to 20 tons a year. Now, the funny thing about this 
is that there's very simple solutions to this. If you look at the third page, all you need is an afterburner for the system. A, here's an example of a system, a GE CL AIR exhaust treat after treatment system. Now you as a town board have the ability, I went to the clerk about three weeks ago and I asked for them to give me a copy of the resolution. It was a legal document and I'm pretty sure that same legal document is almost verbatim for Afton and other towns around here. You have the power to say, no, I'm not passing that. I'm telling you that I want an afterburner treatment system. Because this isn't about an accident. This is about something that's literally going to happen day in, day out, every single day while that thing's running. And that's going to run a long time after the leases have expired and return to land ownership returns to the owners. Now, for my, what I saw on YouTube, if you're within a half mile, you're, you're suffering from acute symptoms, which is typically nosebleeds, eye, mouth, nose, respiratory problems. And that seems to mimic what I've, or at least represent what I've heard of problems in areas in Pennsylvania near these compressor stations and other places. Now, of course, there's other things you could take as a town board. You could say that in that legal document, we require tracers to be on the fracking fluid and the drilling fluid. That's a simple step. If you get pushed back from the oil and gas industry because you want simple tracers there, so when an accident happens, you don't have to sit there and get 20 lawyers to try to prove that that combination of chemicals happens to come from a secret mixture of chemicals that they call proprietary. Three minutes. How long have I spoken so far? Okay, so I'm going a little bit beyond. No, no, no. No? Is that it? I'm only allowed three minutes? I've never spoken before. At a total of 30. Pay attention to the motion. Everybody else is Okay, well, evidently I'm silenced. So we'll, uh, yeah. Evan, from what I hear, Pomo's got passed this in probably two weeks, so the other issues will remain unknown to everybody. I think that motion is great. <coughs> and this isn't new, I'm, I'm sure this isn't new information to anybody. <coughs> could, uh, could you, like, warn somebody, maybe 30 seconds left or something? Yeah. I need to get the last uh, one slide. So I'm here again. Not so much to talk about what I think, but I have some information. I learned um, in July that we don't know what is being put into the water, the 250,000 gallons for each trip. Um, and I would like to give this to you. Um, I believe you said we don't know what's going into this or what we could do about it. Someone called me on the phone and said, um, would it be a good idea if we now um, took, had our well <coughs> traced now so that if there is a difference, we would be able to claim it on fracking. Um, at the bottom of this, you have to, at the bottom of this, it will tell you where you can find out uh, where you could find out how your well could be tested. As it is, pure, we hope. Um, also I have some views which tell you what is going to be. Um, it tells you <coughs> what they're putting into it, what how it's used, <coughs> and what the result is. 
can't believe I'm shy about this. Hot for 28 years, talking to everybody. <laughs> I may not talk that about the chair. Also, there are several groups of people. Doctors have a camel, and they have checked to see. Um, <coughs> Um, in Portland and in Portland and in several places and um, engineers as well as doctors have all the same conditions and now we have it too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I had one other point to make that when you, um, if you do advocate putting tracers on, and I know it's only advocation because you don't make the, you know, it's really the state's going to end up making the rules. Is that you have to not only put tracers on the fracking fluid, you have to put tracers on the, on the drilling fluids. Because the drilling fluids, from what I see, the common component of drilling fluids is barite, which is a mineral. That's barium SO4. There's contaminants of that commonly as arsenic. Now in the incident in Franklin Forks in Pennsylvania, those, curiously enough, well, actually it's a little bit more than that. It's barite, it's the arsenic, it's chromium, uh, sometimes lead, but those were the exact same chemicals that went up in their drinking water within months of drilling of, again, a mile away from the DuPays farm. Okay, but I guess that's what I'm saying. You have to put tracers on both the drilling muds and the fracking fluids. And if you, as a township, could maintain samples, I'd be very happy because that's exactly <laughs> what needs to be done. Lauren Snyder from one in Rice Road. I've owned my farm for 47 years, about 480 acres, and it's a very beautiful place. I care about the environment as much as anyone else. Also, I've been a chemist, a professional chemist, for 60 years, and I'm still an O'Leary professor at the University of Albany. So I'm familiar with chemistry and chemicals. <coughs> I'm concerned about fracking and the results of fracking myself. So I've taken four trips down at the dinner. I don't like to take my information secondhand from either proponents of uh, drilling or opponents because they tend to be very biased. So I went down at the dinner four times and asked the people there what were their feelings about what's happened in their communities. And generally, they were very supportive. They thought their communities had been improved by the presence of the development of gas. So the impression I get from the people that live in Dinnick over four years is supportive of this development. And the last thing I want to say is it is going to produce opportunities and income for us. I know as a professor, I'd like to use my extra income to support scholarships for young students who want to study chemistry, or fellowships for graduate students who want to study chemistry, or maybe uh, fund a professorship for an outstanding teacher. There's some things, some very good things that can be done with the resources that come to us from fracking. We have to be concerned, we have to be careful. I think the Department of Environmental Conservation is a very good department and that we can depend on them for technical analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Was there anybody else? Hi, I'm Alice Wilcott from Susquehanna County. My husband Jim and I leased our property to Cabot Oil and Gas in 2009. We live less than two miles from Carter Road, Dimmock. We are surrounded by gas wells. Our experience with Cabot and subcontractors and pipeline companies has been overwhelmingly positive. Cabot is a good steward of the land. Well sites and pipelines are mostly are neatly done and in fact properties are left looking better than before. 
we do have increased traffic, but Cabot not only repairs roads, it does a first-class job rebuilding roads for public use. We find Cabot employees to be professional and courteous. Cabot's corporate office and its individual employees contribute to our communities by volunteering their services at assisted living homes, flood relief efforts, and park improvement projects, to name a few. Cabot recently donated $2 million to the Montrose Hospital Building Fund. <coughs> and in July, we and over 7,000 others attended the third annual Cabot picnic. Our public is definitely supportive of the industry. In spite of the positive influence of the gas drilling industry, negative media coverage has been pervasive. I recently spoke to a Dimmick landowner who told me his brother in California was very concerned that his water had been polluted. It was not. And when a family from Colorado came to Dimmick to see the effects of gas drilling, they asked that same landowner where Dimmick was. He said, you're in it. The visitors thought they would be uh, see barricades and keep out signs. DEP has determined that Dimmick's water is clean. Much has been made of lighting faucets on fire, but methane occurs naturally in our area and was documented long before drilling or fracking ever existed. Employment is up, people are spending, and keeping in mind that we expect nothing less than responsible drilling, we are very happy with our new normal. We invite you to visit beautiful Susquehanna County, stop for lunch, speak to residents, and decide for yourself. Thank you. I, uh, I think we got a little fixed up here. I believe there was time left for somebody to want to speak against it. That'll be nice. I think in the back there, I don't know whether she raised her hand before. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Brian Stevens. And the reason I address this board tonight is to take issue with the pro drilling resolution passed in May meeting. Gas development in the town of Stanford is an all around bad idea. The only interest it serves are those of, <coughs> those of a few large landowners in Exxon. Trusting an understaffed and underfunded DEC with the future of our town would be disastrous. By passing the resolution that was spoon-fed to you by the JLC, you have failed in your primary function to represent the people you allegedly serve. Our water <coughs> resources are too vital to gamble with. If the New York City and Syracuse watersheds are off limits, what makes ours any less vital? If it's not safe there, then how can it be safe here? We ought not make our hometown into a guinea pig for an industry that claims it needs an exemption from the Safe Water Drinking Act without considering why that may be. The cumulative effect of transforming our beautiful countryside into an industrialized hellscape would forever ruin any chances of future, future economic opportunities outside of drilling. Let's not put all our eggs in one basket. Yes, things are tough and times are hard, but you don't set the house on fire to stay warm in the winter. Remember, gentlemen, that many of you here today won't be around in 30 years to live with the fallout from the decision you may make. It's time for this board to represent the interests of all of your constituents and put people before profits, health before industrialization, and the needs of all before the greed of a few. It is for these reasons that I call upon this board to value our health, safety, and peaceful way of life, rescind the motion, and declare a moratorium on gas development in the town of Sandy. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. The lady in the back there, I believe, wanted to speak. Can you give us your um, Actually, in the very short. Um, I've just been concerned. I've been seeing signs all over leading into the town. Nobody really takes responsibility for them, but they talk about responsible gas drilling. And I thought, well, responsible, that sounds like a good word. So I wanted to read you what responsible is, because I thought it might be a good reminder to bring to discussion at this point. Responsible means answerable, accountable, um, involving accountability, obligations, or duties. Answerable to being the cause, agent, or <coughs> source of something, and the ability to distinguish right from wrong. It's also being trustworthy, dependable, reliable, able to pay debt. 
and meet obligations. The reason I bring this up is that um, I'm thinking, well, responsible gas drilling, no one um, down in Pennsylvania, none of the gas companies seem to be claiming responsibility. It's always someone else's fault, or the gas is in the ground, or the cows are already sick, or, or there's always some other reason why it's not them, why the, um, the doctor shouldn't be able to report diseases to see if there's been a pattern of epidemiology. Um, so I'm thinking, well, the gas drillers aren't really being very responsible, so maybe that's not what those signs are about. It's not about the gas companies being responsible. So who's going to be responsible? Well, we went down to um, Montrose, and we looked, and we found um, the signs for the gas drilling, and the gas wells are named after the owners of the farm, the leaseholders. So that's who's going to be responsible. So I'm just kind of making the point that I was told that, uh, um, at a, a movie that we saw the other day that um, there really is no trouble with getting insurance um, and liability insurance when you're a landholder. And um, I thought that's really good because I think these landholders are going to really need the insurance because they're going to be the ones who are going to be responsible if anything goes wrong. I'm sorry, I don't think you did your name. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Diane McInnes and my family has been in this area for six generations and some of you have known me since I was born. Um, I just want to address the whole town because what I've watched over the last five years is this division that I think is tearing us apart. It's not the community that I felt when I, I was a kid <laughs> where everybody kind of was all together. We've got something we're facing here, and we're facing it together. It's difficult and it's complex, and it seems to me that people take sides and then establish everything on that side, whether it's pro-fracking or anti-fracking, but that's not what it's about. It's about what is this community? What do we want here? How do we protect that? and establish a community where there isn't fear. I've been living in fear for five years because whenever I brought up the issue, it was like, <gasps> you know, don't talk about that. And then, you know, like, like when I'm speaking to you a couple of minutes ago, I just wanted you to try it so I could hear what the person said. And this anger. Why are we having anger? Anger stems from desire that's thwarted. <coughs> Some people have desire for wealth. Some people have desire for shelter, for food, all of those things. But we need to not give in to every desire. We need to think about what we want for this whole community, and we need to work together to protect it so that we get that. And we can't do it by being enemies. We need to listen to one another, and then we need to really address the issues. Don't take the J. Uh, Joint Landers Co Coalition of New York's uh, facts, because I've looked at their facts and then I've looked at other facts, and guess what? They're not the same. Really look at it. Really address each and every issue. I think the idea of tracers, it shouldn't be an idea. It should be absolute. Absolute. Don't you want to know if your well gets contaminated by whom? Where did that come from? And we talk about methane was in the um, in the water before, yeah, a little bit. But suddenly, a lot of people in one nine square mile area, here in Colorado, in Wyoming, I mean, it's not funny. This is something we really need to look at. We can't just go to these, these media uh, things about how we look at this. We need to address each issue. We need to have trucks that are accountable. If you're going to be moving wastewater, we better have tracking devices on those trucks because we know in Pennsylvania we have video of them dumping into ditches on the side of the road. About 15 seconds. 
Well, I think I've said it. I think what I'm saying to this community is we need to work together. We can't divide or we will lose. The only people that will win will be gas companies way off in the Cayman Islands. It won't be us. We need growth and deposits. Yes, I have had many ways to get it. Let's not argue. Let's solve the problem. Let's solve the problem. I've been up there for four years. I've been my name is Elmer Mitchell. I live uh, across from the golf course. And um, I'm new Sorry. to the area, relatively speaking, but my parents have been here for quite a while. Okay. And uh, I'd just like to make a couple of points really quick. Uh, I went down to Pennsylvania recently to see what was going on, and I didn't like what I saw. I saw fire coming out of the ground. I saw chemical gas coming out of these pipes that stick out of the ground. People living next to this stuff, and it makes me wonder, how can they live next to it? And somebody said to me, well, it's a question of money. Um, our property has to be surrounded by people who've already leased their property. We're not leased yet. But um, in Pennsylvania, they they can't drill under you if you say no. They can drill your neighbor, but they can't go under you. Unfortunately, what they're planning to do here in New York is to say, if your neighbor wants to lease, you don't have a choice. They're going to go under you, and you, you won't, be, won't be able to do anything about it. That doesn't seem like a choice to me. <laughs> and uh, I met a woman who her well was contaminated. She couldn't do anything about it. The property she had bought was already leased previously, and uh, the gas company was bringing water to her house to put in a big jug next to her house. That's the <coughs> only clean water that she had, and it was up to the gas company when they wanted to bring the water, how much water they wanted to bring her. To me, it looked like she was a slave, you know? That doesn't seem like choice to me. And uh, we visited a site where, a well site which had just had an accident, just had a spill. And their PR guy came out and talked to us. Uh, he couldn't answer to any of our questions that we had, except to say that uh, this company owned 500 sites, I asked him, how many of these kind of accidents have happened with those 500? He said, 80 some, 80 plus. To me, that's not a good record. They didn't know when the spill had happened. They didn't know how much time had passed between the time the spill had happened and the time that they found the spill. So, 30 seconds. All right. Uh, so, last point I want to make is uh, I think this issue should be left up to the community. If you become aware of how the community feels on this issue, it doesn't matter what you thought yesterday or last week. What matters is what the community feels. If you leave it up to the community, we can decide for ourselves. We don't need a board of Republicans to decide it for us. You've already leased your property. You've already leased your property. And you, you said at the last meeting, you said at the last meeting, that you said at the last meeting that you would you would uh the time is up. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And now anybody that would like to speak on the other side of the issue. And has last Bruce. I think this gentleman <coughs> Talking about uh, John talking about uh, uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Please you coming out of it. What's your name, please? Ah, Jerry Mint. I'll leave it up here in front of the road. Okay. Uh, well, like I said, it's uh, 
You're talking about uh, all kinds of gas coming all over the place. Well, a friend of mine lives in vegetable. His house is about 350000 and then some. Well, we you up the faucet and put one of those sliders on it, they got five barbecues over the there sitting over the faucet. I mean, you're talking about uh, that fire uh, coming out of Montrose, you know. Well, there's, there's gas coming out all over the ground. No matter where you can go, you can go my, probably in my backyard and drill a hole down 10 feet, you probably get gas out of there too. I mean, you know, the other stuff we're talking, people are talking about, gas coming all over the place, and chemicals, you know. This has been around all over for years. And there's nothing wrong with Monroe. There's a couple of accidents that did have, oh sure, they did have a uh, problem. That's human nature. They made a mistake. So maybe he died, he goofed up. And that's it, so he made, huh, made a mistake. But there's more problems besides just that little gas from him. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Frank Chamberlain. Uh, I've been here 20 years, and since the time I moved in here, I've been in retail business, my own businesses. I've invested about $850,000 to date. I hired up to 30 local children at a time, high school kids, to work in my stores. And, um, those stores just never made it because there's no people. And uh, you need people to run businesses. But we've heard a lot of men, uh, many negatives here tonight, and I respect everyone's right to their opinion. But it is much easier to imagine all the negatives of anything in this world today. And in doing so, these folks lose sight of common sense and the greater good. I make my living in the outdoors. There are not many who love the wild mountains, swamps, and bush country like myself. But I believe the land, surface, and subsurface is there for us to utilize in a safe and profitable manner, with common sense and for the greater good. Delane and I, my wife, we've had a life-changing experience due to the oil and gas leases and pipeline industry. We should embrace this gas exploration. The trickle-down effect of Delane and I's good fortune has contributed to many local businesses and their families. The industry brings people, and people bring progress to those who need it and to those who want more in their lives. Of course, there will be problems. We're not blind to that fact. But the gas companies, along with the DEC and local authorities, have the latest technology to handle these issues quickly and effectively. There are tremendous opportunities for young and old, like me. There will be many jobs for people who want a better life and who can apply themselves to the highest level of work ethics I've ever seen in my career. Common sense and the greater good tells us to be progressive, to move forward in an intelligent, productive, polite, and safe manner for economic growth that will benefit our community, our children, and our families for generations to come. So please, let's try to look at this exciting industry and potential economic boom with open minds. Embrace it. We all should thank the Town of Sanford Board for being so objective in spite of all the negative spin. And thank them again for caring for the welfare of this town and its people with common sense and the greater good. Thank you. Don't you, don't you work for Bluestone Gas? My name is Delane Chamberlain. I work in the oil and gas industry in New York and Susquehanna. I have been in the area for 11 years. I will tell you that this town in the last 10 years is dying. Children are leaving this area. There are no jobs. <coughs> to get a job, you probably have 70% of your people in this town, in Deposit and Sanford, that are well below probably 20000 a year. You can't pay your heating, your electric, your mortgage. Somebody said a couple weeks ago, well, it's all about money. Well, you need money to live. You need money for your food. You drive a car. Gas is going up. A lot of people, I hear people say, oh, well, I don't want it in my backyard. Well, you have shoes. They're made from fuel. You have tires on your car. It's made from fuel. You have to go to the grocery store. <coughs> your food is trucked in requires fuel. Why is it okay for it to be somewhere else? When we need it here for our children, maybe they won't leave then. It costs someone to go from deposit to Binghamton to go to work. They may only make $200 a week. 
And I know quite a few of the young people that are from deposit, that drive to Binghamton. They pay for daycare. They have to pay their rent, fuel. It costs them around $80 a week to go back and forth to Binghamton. So we need this industry. The PSC, the DEC, they have all these regulations in place to make it safe, to be responsible. There's too many foreclosures going on in the area where people are losing their homes that they've had in their families for generations. You can have structural testing, water well testing, all that done. They come to you and they ask you, do you want the testing done? I've heard that some people have denied them. Gas naturally rises up through the fissures, through the cracks in the rock, without the drilling process. <coughs> so, and the fracking water that everyone's talking about, it's held in fracking tanks. It's allowed to settle. Seconds. And then it's disposed of properly with DEC or DEP officials. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nick Barone. I'm the President of the Chamber of Commerce here in the past. And I'm not here because of the Chamber of Commerce. We are neutral until the state uh, releases its findings. If, if people think back, if Pennsylvania had the regulations that New York State will have. Out of 25 cases that were found in Pennsylvania, and they can be read, one case was a disaster. But there were 25 cases in Pennsylvania. If they would have had the regulations that New York State will have in its regulations, you will find that you will probably have probably, I think, the best regulations in the country. I don't think anywhere in the United States there you would find uh, regulations that are so stringent. Now, the young lady just talked about jobs. As the president of the chamber, you know how hard it is to try to get industry to come in for the deposit. <coughs> I've been on the phone talk to people the last three years two and a half years as president. People do not want to come. There was nothing for them. And just as she said, if you have a young man that grows up, becomes 18, and he wants a job, you may have to work in Big M for minimum wage if he can get a job. And I, nothing wrong with Big M, but I'm just trying to... There are, you know, there isn't enough of well, we know there's not enough industry, unfortunately, we've all moved out. But there isn't, there isn't enough here for anyone. Now, look, I'm from the city, I've been up here since 1970 as a part-time resident. And I go back and my wife, we talk about speech, and look at this, look what happened in our paper today. And look what the president said. <coughs> Natural gas is an ideal energy source. Natural gas actually burns cleaner. Than most fossils, it's an ideal fuel, uh, fuel, and there's enough here for 100 years. So we want to encourage natural gas production. The key to make sure that we do it safely in a way that is environmentally sound. And that was President Obama. Now, all right. 15 seconds. I'm not endorsing President Obama or anybody else, but I'm just reading the article on the paper. I think it's about time we start to think about progress here in the public. Thank you. Exercising their gas rights and leasing their property. 
this is uh, this is a map of the town of Sanford. The purple area is land that's on the lease right now. The uh, white area is obviously unleased. The purple area uh, represents 26,000 acres in the town of Sanford. At which that constitutes 47 percent of the land in the town of Sanford. I right now, as of today, have an additional 15,000 acres ready to commit to leasing, which would bring the total in the town of Sanford to 41,211 acres. That would make the total area of the town of Sanford 75 percent leased. Now, if you throw in the state. Which they, which they will lease, they have 3,640 acres, that'll bring the percent of land in the town of Santa at least up to 81%. And uh, this will happen. <coughs> By the time it's said and done, it'll probably be closer to 90% of the land that's leased in the town of Santa. That's how many people need this and want it. So, if anybody wants to take a look. Excuse me? How many people or how many acres? I mean, how, many how many acres? People does that represent? Well, I don't know if I would count people because the people running around with petitions approach my grandchild, right, on Center Street. Good for them. Yeah. Good for them. Your grandchild has a right to his own. That's right. It's not, to, not to intimidate. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. This is on debate. Uh, this people right on Center Street in town, my three grandchildren over there. A woman come across the street with a petition to a 15-year-old, 11-year-old, and a 10-year-old as a car crept up behind them. These kids were scared out of their mind. My, my biggest granddaughter held the little ones behind her mind, but behind them. They had told her to stay away from strangers. So this is the tactics that you use? I mean, please. How else do you approach people? How else do you approach You don't approach little children. How are they? Well, 15, 10, 11? They're not adults. Yeah, they're not adults. I mean, you know, you want to fight fair, that's like people on your equal plane. Uh, no, you're in the middle of my speech. Here. I just want to say the governing of natural gas development is a complex regulatory process that requires enormous technical knowledge and financial resources. This can only be achieved through regulation at the state level, as it has been successfully for decades. Hi. We got two folks. Don't ask, there's no one after me. I still got more. I'm going to do one more. We got two people who are very hard. Let them talk. This is you. I had a scorn in those my time's up. We've had two people on the program speak during our 30 minutes. This is time's up, too. I'm Larry Schaefer. I live here in the deposit, born and raised here. My grandfather's floated logs down Delaware River. That's where the name for this town came from. I employ a lot of people in this community, and some of them are even from Pennsylvania. Right now, my son-in-law and my nephew are working in Pennsylvania clearing gas lines. And let me tell you, that's where the money is today. It's not in deposit. We'd rather farm it and log it here. And we hang on to our family farm by working outside just like my grandparents did. And we're very proud to be in deposit. There's not many of us left to make our living here in deposit. It's very, very hard. And you don't see the dairy farms that you saw when I was a kid on the school bus. They, they're all gone because they couldn't make it here. And this is an opportunity for us to keep our land and to keep large parcels of land instead of having it all broken into little pieces as the farmers have had to sell that land. I'm a taxpayer in this town, and I'm a taxpayer in the town of Deposit, and as I said, I'm an employer of quite a lot of people here now, and there's not many people that want to employ people in Deposit anymore. It's a very hard thing to do. And I'm in the quarrying and the timbering business, and let me tell you, with the government in my face all the time in those businesses, I think you can do exactly fine watching over some gas drilling. And there wouldn't be thousands of wells going in, in Pennsylvania every year if it was this big of a problem. And I studied this not just recently, I studied this many years ago before I would lease my land. And if I didn't feel it was a safe thing to do, I certainly wouldn't lease my land because I've got 
grandkids and kids in this town too, and I grew up with many of you folks here. So I've done my homework, I've done my research, and yes, there is potential for problems. I think that those of us at least here with XTO and ExxonMobil have picked a very good company to lease with. We researched them before we leased with them, so there's been a lot of homework done here. I worked on the Millennium Pipeline with our people, and they treat us very well. They pay their bills. We grew our company. We employed a lot of people here, and yes, there is problems, but they fix their problems, just like you will have problems if you drive your car instead of leaving it parked in the garage. You will have problems with it. And these things just have to be kept under control, and I think that New York State has plenty of money and plenty of opportunity to Perfect. lord over this gas business. They got a lot of money in income tax from those of us landowners that have already leased land. The numbers are astounding, so don't let them tell you they don't have the money to hire the regulators. And those regulators are well available. They can certainly hire them out of Pennsylvania where they're well trained, Time. and that's why we have to work in Pennsylvania now. Thank you. Again, I'm Lauren Snyder from 110 Bryce Road. I have an 18-year-old grandson, Jonathan. He was down at the pond working a couple of days ago, and a car came by. And the guy in the car asked him, how do you keep the weeds out of your pond? And Jonathan said, we have grass carp. And Jonathan's kind of an outgoing guy. He said, where are you from? I live up toward Marsh Pond. He said, what do you do? I'm going to work on fracking, the guy said. Jonathan said, can you help me get a job in, in fracking? He said, yes. And he gave him his telephone number. I mean, the impact is already beginning to happen in our community, quietly. endorsing the state process that brings no material benefit to a, a town board member who has no control over the DEC's regulatory process. It's really difficult to imagine how anyone can accuse any town official of a conflict of interest for simply acknowledging that the state rulemaking process appropriately protects the rights of all of us whether you're opposed or whether you're flu gas on, their regulation is going to protect all of us. You know, so uh, that's about it. Oh, one thing on the health issue. I want to talk about hydrofracking here. Uh, does everybody know here that Lisa Jackson, uh, last year in May, the administrator of the EPA testified to Congress that there has been zero instance of water contamination due to hydrofracking? Is everybody aware of that? Yeah. Yep. 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 Thank you. 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 Prepared are, to say, doesn't matter. There were two people that spoke during our section. I'm speaking. I'm speaking in the place of the two pro gas people that spoke. Larry Snyder spoke in pro during the anti. So don't start the time on it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Like I said, I didn't prepare anything. I am a landowner here in the town of Sanford. You, as a board, sorry, my name is Diana Vanderbilt. My name is Diana Vanderbilt, and I live in the town of Sanford. And I'm new to the area. My mother lived here for. Uh, what? I don't know how many years. Forever. Forever. <laughs> um, we grew up here. I grew up here. My children grew up here. My grandchildren are growing up here. 
I want them to be able to stay here. You as a board, you represent us as a town. We need you to listen to us. We need you to listen to us. There are a lot of people, 500 plus people who signed this petition that are terrified of what is going to happen because there is documentation, there are facts that show that this process, which is a new process, they don't know that much about it, that there, there is proof that it's dangerous. It's, it's poisoning the water, it's poisoning the air, it's killing people. And I know that you are good men who would not, who would not intentionally harm the people that you serve. If you think about the fact that there may be a chance that all of the things that you've heard, that I hope that you're reading, that are against this process of fracking, if, that, if that's true, and people are dying from this, how horrible would you feel? Is it worth any amount of money? Me, of all people, <laughs> I need the money. I need the money. You know, Allison knows. I can't pay my taxes. I could, I could use that money. But I don't want it. Because it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Please do the research. Please. Thank you. Somebody that can speak for it? Uh, uh, John Donaldson, I own property up on uh, Gulf Summit Road. Uh, been a uh, part of this community since 1990. I've had a business in the community, and uh, and I just like to say that this this whole town, this whole area, the livelihoods of the people that are here have always drawn from the natural resources, um, and and it's done very well that way. The timber and the stone, and other types of things. Um, and and I, I've dealt in the timber industry, and I know the way the DEC regulates has been stated already. And I do believe with the um, uh, with how the DEC regulates the other industries that I think that they will be very um, very proactive in making sure that, that the gas industry is done safely <coughs> or as safe as it can be done. They've had time to, to, to look over this and watch Pennsylvania and all all the whole uh, United States do this fracking. And they've been very deliberative on this, and I, I do believe we, whatever they come up with will keep our community safe, but also keep our community prosperous. Because jobs are what keep this community going. Jobs are what pays the taxes, um, along with land taxes and that type of thing. But uh, it is important that we have jobs in this area, and I do believe that uh, the state will do it in a way that will be safe for the community and also prosperous for the community. Thank you. be the end of the uh, public hearing as far as yes. If there is anybody that has something other than, than yes, you're welcome to speak. Um, just very quickly. I other, other than yes. Other than gas, yes. Yes. Absolutely other than gas, nothing to do with gas. I'm all done with gas. I just want to say that I really think we should strengthen our rules on zoning so we don't have in the valley of Farnham Road a trailer park that's got to stay with us for a couple, <coughs> stay with us forever. Okay. Uh, I just uh, I came out tonight because I read in the paper that uh, this board was criticized specifically its ethics for passing a resolution. And I just wanted to point to my personal experience with this board. I've, I've been attending board meetings, uh, planning board, zoning board, and town board for 35 years. Every single meeting that the town has is noticed in the paper, and whenever there is a, an agenda item, there's a legal notice in the paper. There's nothing secretive. The, the board has no hidden agenda. Um, 
I understand that uh, there was criticism that some of the board members may have uh, leases. Uh, my understanding is those, my understanding is those were disclosed, and um, and then the uh, board members that were affected recused themselves from any voting. I can tell you from my personal experience that the ethics of this board is beyond reproach, and I was really upset when I read in the paper that, that it was called into question. That, that's all I wanted to add. You're right. <laughs> everyone in the community, don't you think the community should be allowed to decide that issue instead of the board? That's the only point I'd like to make. I would like to commend this board on spending the time it does on all these issues. I know how hard it is to be on a board. I've been on many of myself for very many years, and these boards are elected by the people and are representatives of our community. And I know that a lot of you folks have put in many, many years of service, and it's not fair for people to pick at that service. Your landowners, as we're landowners, and that's a, the people that should be on these boards, the people that pay the taxes. And it's the landowners that pay the taxes for all the things that all these other people want, and they should be paying their share too. Us landowners are the ones that should be the only ones voting for these boards, not just the people that want everything all the time. And I want to thank you for doing what you do for all of us. clerk up this morning and asked what anything interesting was going to happen uh, this evening at the town board meeting. She said there was nothing extraordinary. And, and I think I asked specifically anything about uh, the gas development. She, she said there were no resolutions on the agenda. So I have to tell you, I learned about this meeting from other people that live around here, not from the township clerk. So be careful to seek information about what's going to happen immediately from the township clerk. You may not reveal everything you want to know. So go to concerned people that you know and you'll learn a lot more. Okay, thank you. <laughs>